Okay, here is a piece of plywood that I cut out, um, you know, which is a little bit bigger than the propeller, and I put a uh, basically a wall around it because it needs to hold the clay and everything in. Then I added the partitions, and this is so I just don't have to use a whole lot of clay. I mean, I guess I could have made this whole thing, uh, this whole base out of clay, but uh, this will give me a good um, uh, mold size. So this is what it looks like with the prop out. It's very important to make sure that you wax your propeller very well and that you uh, put PVA on it so it won't stick. Uh, here I've put the initial layer, layer clay, clay in. I put uh, approximately a half inch and um, that will give me plenty to build up. Here's the prop that I've put the uh, three or four coats of PVA on it. That reason it has a green tint to it. The next thing I'm going to do here is push the propeller down into the clay a little bit but remember it's extremely important that you uh, have the clay completely around the leading and trailing edge right in the middle of the airfoil so it will pop up out of the uh, uh, clay or mold here I had to go to Walmart and get more clay because <clears throat> this took an awful lot of clay uh, to do this so uh, here you can see I've built up a little bit more around the uh, blades and uh, you basically want to be able to make the mold cover only half the propeller exactly one half uh... here you can see the clay's been built up uh... to the leading edge and the trailing edge of this one blade and as i work myself away uh, around the uh... six other blades i'm sorry the five other blades i end up having uh... exactly half of the propeller exposed and that's what i'm going for here here i've uh... used a screwdriver handle to put a couple of uh... uh dents in the clay and uh, that's for alignment holes and then I put on uh, four or five coats of PVA uh, here I've put on my first basically what I call my gel coat but it's basically my uh, wet system with some filler lay on uh, three or four layers of uh, two or four ounce glass cloth and uh, then I uh, so I don't have to use a whole bunch of glass cloth I put on uh, some bondo to kind of be the filler uh, to support the mold and uh, let that uh, put it on a couple of uh, thin layers because you put it on there all at once it gets very hot but it actually helps your epoxy cure quicker too so here is an example now this is jumping ahead a little bit so you all know you never take the propeller out of the mold until you've made both mold halves but I decided to throw this in to show you what it looked like once I peeled away the clay and I um, uh, you know would have taken the propeller out of the mold but you never take the prop out you just take the clay off it and then you build on your other half so uh, essentially what's happening here is uh, it's uh, very important to uh, be able to then put the uh, do the exact same processes that you did in those first steps on the other side of the prop once you've removed the clay this was my first test prop that I pulled out of it, and this was only to understand um, if the mold worked, if I could get this out of the mold. Uh, here is what my uh, actual plug weighed. If I was going to use it, it would have been 13.4 ounces. And here is what it would have weighed. Uh, I mean, this is what it weighs uh, as a carbon fiber prop, which is 4.9 ounces. So a huge amount of weight savings there. This is the prop cut up, showing that it's a hollow prop and that the uh, epoxy uh, you'll see in the video coming up that I put around the perimeter, that's what that white on the leading and trailing edge is. That's what uh, actually uh, adheres the entire system together. Here is going to be my first test propeller. This is all the carbon fiber I cut out for my patterns I created. That will also be covered in the video coming up in a little bit I built a turntable for the base or the rear of the prop so I could actually shim and adjust it to make sure that the blade was perfectly true this was my first test of laying the carbon fiber cloth into the front of the propeller and this is the first test of me laying a test propeller into the rear of the propeller once again you gotta wax this really thoroughly and you gotta put PVA on as you can see, um, I have a bead of white uh, epoxy with filler around the perimeter of the entire prop. I do this on both sides so that when um, I place the hub in the middle of the prop, 
and then push the two halves together, it thoroughly gets uh, epoxy um, around the entire perimeter of the propeller properly. And here's a better picture of the hub in the center there and the epoxy bead around the perimeter of the prop. This is me putting the uh, front half prop onto the back half and then I use uh, Allen head screws and uh, well, just different junk screws, socket heads, whatever I've got, um, cap screws and I screw the two halves together. This was the first test prop that came out of the mold. And that's once I uh, groomed it, which is basically taking 120 grit sandpaper and cleaning up the uh, trailing and leading edge of the prop. That is after I wet sanded it with 400 grit sandpaper. And this was me testing a uh, mock-up spinner on it just to see what it would look like. And uh, this shows all of the uh, carbon fiber cloth I cut out to make my four flight props. And that covers this part. And coming up in just a minute, you're going to see the processes that it takes for me to actually make the propeller. Now we're going to go through the steps, what it takes to actually lay up a propeller. First thing I do is I thoroughly clean my molds. I've already put... Uh, four coats of wax on one prop earlier so I do the four coats of wax about every other propeller I do then I use some just water warm water or water out of a spray bottle at, at room temperature to clean the mold out that gets rid of any of the old uh, PVA which is water solu soluble then I set up my air gun with some um, uh, the PVA and uh, here you're gonna see me put on a couple of really really thin mist coats and this is just a mist you, you want it to look almost like it's a flat uh, type of uh, uh, clear. You don't want it to look glossy at all. So here I'm uh, applying my uh, uh, resin and um, actually I had to put a little piece of wax right in the center there because that's where my alignment hole for drilling the center hole through the propeller is and I don't want resin to reach down in there. So right here I'm uh, applying resin to the entire mold and now I'm taking my carbon fiber cut from my pattern out and I'm going to push it really hard down into the mold and uh, make sure that nothing on the leading or trailing edge is outside the mold. If that happens, it can cause cavities around the leading and trailing edge of your propeller. Uh, so you got to just really take your time and get each one of these layers exactly on top of each other. Now on the front half of the propeller, there will be uh, four layers of carbon fiber and here I've jumped uh, a four uh, ahead to the last layer of carbon fiber that's going to go on that propeller. I mean on the front half of the propeller. I always put a liberal amount of uh, resin on every layer so that it's almost squishy in there and uh, that's to make sure that I've got proper penetration through all layers. Now here I take paper towel and I basically um, almost squeegee or, or uh, push against and try to extract every bit of resin that won't stay in the mold now. Okay, and it's really important to keep making sure your trailing and leading edge is not getting pushed or like gushed out of uh, the perimeter of the mold. Okay, and I go through all six blades here and get every bit of the resin I can get out because extra resin in there is weight, it's not strength. And here you can see I'm still grooming the uh, leading and trailing edge just to make sure it's right. So that half the propeller is done. I've gone off to mix up another batch of my uh, wet system. And now I'm going to do the back half of the propeller. And the back half has three layers of carbon fiber. And um, it just takes a while to, uh, you know, essentially get that all applied on there. 
as you can see, it's taking me 27 minutes plus right now, and I'm just now working on the back half of the propeller, getting it right. And here I'm, we're going to jump to the uh, last layer. And this last layer right here uh, uh, is, uh, I'm sorry, that was the, yes, that's the last layer where I'm squeegeeing out now all the excess uh, carbon fiber that's in there. Now I'm mixing up my West system because... Uh, the uh, West system is um, going to be mixed with the filler now, and I'm going to use syringes to squirt around the perimeter of the front and rear half of the propeller like I showed in the picture. As you can see, I'm 41 minutes into this. Um, it's a lot of fun doing this, but it, it's really precise, and you got to take your time. And uh, it takes around uh, uh, an hour per, per propeller to get it laid up, and then I normally let it cure overnight or at least eight hours. But right here I'm uh, filling up my syringes with the um, epoxy and filler. And normally it takes four syringes to do a propeller blade. And there I'm putting in uh, epoxy for the hub. And I'm going around the entire perimeter of the propeller. And you want a uh, about an eighth inch bead. So there's any void or anything that happens where the carbon fiber moved around, you want that epoxy to kind of take that up. So far I have not had any noticeable uh, areas. Most of this kind of uh, squishes out through the mold and uh, just enough is kept within the uh, leading and trailing edge to uh, uh, make the propeller uh, uh, stick to the two halves. Okay. So this is uh, not a hard step to do, it's just you got to take your time, and uh, it's a little tedious. And uh, now I'm just going to go through and make sure everything looks good, I don't see anything coming apart. I'm going to put the two halves together, and now I'm going to take uh, probably another 5 or 10 minutes, making sure I've screwed every bit of this completely together right. And you really want to take your time here and make sure that you look around the entire perimeter of the mold to make sure there's no air gaps or there's no, there's you know nothing that makes uh, it look like... Uh, you know the mold didn't go together right because if the mold doesn't go together right there's no way the insides are going to come out right and uh, this is tedious right here it takes a while to do one thing I've learned about when I make these propellers like this is that um, if you really take your time and you lay out all your processes and you have everything pre-cut, pre-laid out in front of you, uh, and everything is just at your arm's length, th these are not hard to build. They just take time and they take your patience to be as accurate as you can. One thing that takes a little bit longer than normal on putting my mold back together with the screws is that the blind nuts on the back side will fall out sometimes. So I'd recommend if you ever made up a prop like this that you're going to make a lot of propellers out of, come up with a better system than blind nuts on the back. Or maybe put blind nuts on in a layer of glass cloth over the blind nuts to help capture them so they won't fall out. And as you can see, I'm coming up on one hour, and that's about what it takes to make one of these, uh, to lay up one of these propellers. Um... You know, the first time I did it is about an hour and a half, and the fastest I've done it, I think, is about 54, 55 minutes. Um, but an hour is going to be average. Okay, so what's happened here is I've already removed all the screws, and I'm going around with a screwdriver and really uh, lightly trying to release the um, top half of the mold, and um, it does take a little bit of work. Um, when you build a proper mold where each half fits exactly 
50% of the propeller, um, there's some real tight angles in there. So um, as you can see here, it popped right off. The bottom half, because of the pitch of the propeller, there's a lot more area touching it, and it's a lot harder to get off. And one of the processes that I've learned to do is uh, to use popsicle sticks to get each of the tips up and out. Right here you can see that I'm inspecting the prop. I'm looking for any cavities or bubbles, and this propeller came out virtually perfect. I mean, there's not even any pinholes in it, so I was really, really excited with this propeller. Um, so what I do now is I will go to each tip and just really lightly lift it because there will be always some epoxy that's uh, uh, seeped out of the mold. I don't want to actually get up under the blade because I don't want to put a mark on the blade. Um, so what I do is I grab my popsicle sticks and I'll lift the end of the blade just slightly and I'll slide that popsicle blade up, I mean that so popsicle stick up under the blade and I'll do that on all six blades, and then I'll start sliding the popsicle sticks uh, in toward the hub, uh, basically until the propeller pops up out of the uh, mold. So as you can see here, I'm just working very delicately with each prop tip um, until I can get that popsicle stick up um, maybe an inch or two. And uh, as you can see right there, I'm trying to get those two up uh, deep under there. And uh, the beautiful thing about this turntable I made for this prop is I can really rotate it around and work with the prop without uh, uh, it losing any of its trueness. And as I continue on, I just keep uh, working each popsicle stick up under the blade deeper, or I mean uh, farther toward the hub. And uh, basically what will happen is at one point, once I get so much of the rear of the prop half off of the mold, the uh, prop will just uh, uh, pop right up and out. Here I'm working with one of the blades just wiggling a little bit because as soon as that hub starts to move, the whole prop will pop right up out of the mold. And you can see I'm getting the popsicle sticks really close to the hub here. And sometimes I only put three or four uh, popsicle sticks on and I'll pop out. But on this particular prop, I think I ended up with a popsicle stick under each blade. And there it goes. It popped right out. And the beautiful thing about this is, is when it comes out, I mean, you know instantly if it worked. And uh, when I'm looking at the back here, I had no cavities. I had uh, a really, really good looking prop. This is what the first prop, uh, the flight prop, looked like when I popped down the mold. To balance these props, I basically drill a small hole in the trailing, uh, I mean the back side, and I add just a little bit of epoxy until it uh, balances out perfect. And normally it takes two props to balance a prop. I haven't had one where just one prop was heavy. It's new, normally like one half of the prop side is heavier than the other. And uh, this is what it looked like after I put my clear coat on it. And this is what it looks like when uh, I'm uh, balancing it. So I'm really happy at these props. It takes some time and patience, but it's not impossible to do. And that was what it uh, looked like after I uh, spent about 45 minutes testing it on my test stand.